How many know God's good this morning? Amen? Amen. If you guys don't mind, turn in your word to Job chapter 14 this morning. Job chapter 14. I'm so thankful for lives that are being turned around. Thank you, Brian. Job chapter 14, verse 7. Job chapter 14, verse 7. Job chapter, if you don't mind, stand with me this morning. I don't want to change up the way we do things just because it's Easter. Uh, we believe in standing on the Word of God here. Amen. How many know it's the Word of God that will frame your life and keep you? Amen. So Job chapter 14, verse 7, if you're not there, you can look on the screen. He says, for there is a hope of a tree. Oh, yes. Huh? Hallelujah. Did y'all just get what that said? For there is a hope of a tree. Yes. And if it is cut down, it will sprout again. Yes. The tender branch thereof will not cease. Yes. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth rose like a plant. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 7 with me real quick. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19. We're going to read one verse here. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19. He says, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing of a better hope he did, by which he drew nigh on to God. The last few weeks we've been talking about hope and last week we talked about how our hope has got to be anchored in Him. But this week I want to talk a little bit about how hope is the remedy. Yeah. Look at somebody beside you and tell them hope is the remedy. Hope is the remedy. Come on, we believe in voice around here. If you don't believe it, come on, look at somebody right behind you and tell them that hope is the remedy. <laughs> Father, we thank you God this morning. Father, we praise you, God, for lives that was turned around. Yes, Father, I thank you for the life of Jesus that went to the cross. Yes. And God, he died on the cross for us. God, he took the beating upon his back, the spit on his face, the plucking of his beard. Father, I thank you, God, for every stripe that he took. It was for our healing. Yes. Father, God, I thank you, God, that he was willing to die in purpose of the cross. Yes. God, and he died, God. That, God, he may be resurrected again in three days. And, Father, we thank you that, God, today represents the day of resurrection. And, Father, God, I'm reminded, God, that because Jesus was resurrected, God, that, God, people all over this earth, God, can be resurrected as well. That men that are dead, God, in their sins, women that are dead in their sins, children and teenagers that are dead in their sin, God, can be brought to life again. And, Father, I thank you, God, that there is a group of believers, God, that have been brought to life and here, God. And as we celebrate you, God, we want to lift you up and give you the praise. Father, we thank you and we praise you, God. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Before you see it, give somebody, give two people a high five and tell them there is hope. There is, there is hope. You may be seated. The word hope means to have a desire or to be looking or trusting for something. Yes. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you desiring something to change? Are you trusting that something will change? Yes. Do you have hope that something in your life is going to turn around yes. and begin to change? I don't know if you ever saw the movie Shawshank Redemption. It's one of my favorite movies. And in the movie, in the Shawshank Redemption, it says Andy and Red, if you don't remember who they are. Andy was the convicted felon uh, who was innocent, but Red was the one that was in there for life, but yet was guilty. Yeah. They were standing there one day, and they were, it's a movie about justice. It's a movie about despair. It's a movie about friendships. It's a movie about hope, especially hope. Somebody say hope. Oh. It's a movie about vindication, and in one powerful scene, we begin to see that Andy and Red are talking about the power of music, about the power of music that he says to him that in a prison uh, that they cannot take away the music out of your heart. And they begin to talk about it and Red looks at Andy and he said, Andy, what are you talking about? And he said, what, what are you talking that they cannot take out of your heart? That no matter what they place you in, 
no matter the bars, no matter the cell, no matter the prison that they place us in, there's one thing that they cannot take out of our hearts. And, and, and Red looked at Andy and he said, Andy, what are you talking about? And Andy spoke to Red and he said, Red, I'm talking about hope. There's one thing that they cannot take out of our heart. It's hope. And Red looks at him and he says, Andy, you're speaking about a dangerous thing. That hope is a dangerous thing because it can drive men insane. It's got no use on the inside of a prison. And he said, Andy, you better get used to the ideal that hope will not live inside of the prison. And he says to him there, Andy looks back at Red and he said, listen, you got two choices in life. You can either get busy living or get busy dying. There you go. And how do you know that without hope, you are starting the process of death? That's right. That's right. But when you have hope, how do you know you are starting the process yeah. of life? And shortly after that, you see that Andy gets out of the prison. And he says, Red says to him, he says, Andy was right. To be without hope is the dying process. That in impossible situations, having to know the battle is not over until you've given up hope. That's right. Come on. I want to say that to you again. You've never failed yet as long as you have hope. You only have failure when you start to give up hope. But if hope can never be taken away from you, having known that life is still ahead of you. Amen. Amen. Abraham, who was given a promise that it says that he would be the father of all nations. It says that he would have a child. He would be the father of his name was changed from Abram, who was to be the father, to Abraham to be the father of all nations. He had a promise that he would have a child. And having you known that promise did not come to pass. And here he was 99 years old. Somebody say 99 years old. I don't know about y'all, I'm 37 and I don't want another kid. I don't even want the thought of another kid. I got four, my last one's enough. But here he was 99 years old. I don't think that's sinking in with you. 99 years old and God reminds him, my promise still has hope. Yeah. And he says there, you're going to still have the promise come to pass. And his wife laughed because, have you know, if, you, if your wife is 99 and you're 99, somebody should be laughing in this situation. But it said there in Romans chapter 4 that Abraham, he said, for I have hope against hope. Yet still I believe. How many know that in a hopeless situation, he still had hope? Normal circumstances says all hope is gone and there is no point to having hope. But it says Abraham still had hope against hope. Even when everything said no, there was something inside of him that said yes. Have you ever heard that voice inside of you that when everything said no, that something inside of you still said yes. I'll never forget being lost and without God and, and, and plenty of bad circumstances and alcohol circumstances and drug circumstances. And listen, I don't say that from a clean preacher point of view. I'm talking about I got as dirty as a person can get. But there was something inside of me that said you are better than this. Because it was hope trying to rise up to say against all hope when everybody else says you're trash, when everybody else says you're worthless, when everybody else says you're hopeless. How do you know that people are saying that again about this generation, that we have a hopeless generation? But I declare by the glory of God that we have hope because of Jesus. That if this hope gets down in this generation, it will turn a generation around. Because even in the middle of a no, when it rises up, yes turns around a thing. We begin to see there in Job, and all throughout the Word of God, you see there that the word hope is mentioned over 180 times. 180 times. But out of almost 70 times, the word hope is mentioned is in the book of Job. We all know about Job, don't we? How do you know you don't have to be saved to know about Job? You ever heard that? You're going through what hope, what Job went through. That means you're going through a bad day. It means you're going through a bad week. Bad month, bad year. That means that you can't handle one more storm in the middle, in, in the middle of, a, of, of all hell breaking out against you. Yeah. That everything was being lost. But yet, in the middle of Job, 
Out of 180 times in the book of Job, it was mentioned 70 times about hope. In a hopeless situation, in a bad, worthless, give up situation, hope was mentioned more than ever before. Can I ask you a question? What have you been walking through and what has been coming out your mouth? There you go. Yeah, because all I know is that if Job was going through a bad situation, that if hope was being spoken of more, how you know it was what got him out of the situation? And it says there that here in the book of Job that Job lost his children. He lost his business. He lost his home. He lost everything. And the only thing he had left around him was mocking friends and a nagging wife. That's pretty bad, isn't it? I mean, you lose here, you're one of the wealthiest men on earth, and you lose everything, and all you have left is the woman to remind you how bad life is. Yeah, come on. Have you know that's bad? Yeah. I, listen, I don't like it when I don't take out the trash and I got to hear it. I couldn't imagine losing everything. That'd be a bad day for us men, right, guys? Uh, all that was left was some mocking friends and a nagging wife. Edward Hubbard said, and I want to remind you of this, he says, for there is no failure except when trying is no longer done. Yeah. When hope is all lost. Yeah. Job had hit rock bottom and that's all that was left. Yeah. Job had hit rock bottom yes. and there was nothing left to hold on to. Come on. But can I remind you that there are some people in here that have hit rock bottom. But they're not on rock bottom any longer. Yeah. They hit rock bottom. But you know what I found out about rock bottom? It's a good foundation to start to rebuild, my good God. Yeah. Uh, the Bible talks about when Jesus, He says there, He says, don't build your hopes upon the sand or upon the ground. He says, but build it upon the rock. Uh, that you may have hit rock bottom and no one even knows it. Listen, you may have money, you may have a nice car, you may even have a house, but your emotions has hit rock bottom. No one knows what you're thinking in the middle of the night. No one knows what the tears that come down your face driving through traffic. No one knows the void that you feel inside of you. But can I tell you, Jesus has you right where he wants you to be. Because all I know is I'm reminded in the word of God that he says, I am the rock. And all I know is when I hit rock bottom on the deathbed in Virginia,
He begins to speak and he knows who he is in, in, in Job chapter 1. But he begins to remind us all throughout the book of Job about hope. But one particular time in Job, when we opened up there in Job chapter 14, he says there is a hope in a tree. There is a hope in a tree. There is a hope in a tree. That no matter what happens to that tree, yeah, no matter what happens to that tree, it'll still have hope. Yeah. If the branches are taken away. Have you ever seen a tree get pruned back before? I mean, you think it's beautiful. I remember when they did this in our subdivision, this whole long strip when you're driving in. Here there were these pretty trees. And I'll never forget a couple springs ago, uh, they stripped them things down and they just looked like bare sticks sticking up. Ugliest thing you ever seen. Ugliest thing you ever seen. It was embarrassing to drive into the neighborhood. And I'll never forget walking into it my, and thinking to myself, my God, why in the world do they strip those trees down? But you know what happened the next spring? The branches came back. Oh, yeah. And what I thought was pretty before turned into beauty. Yeah. Perfectly shaped beauty. Yeah. Because what I found out about a tree is no matter what you do, have you ever had to cut a tree down? And if you don't cut it to the root, it's coming back. Yes, it yeah. I mean, don't, don't cut it to the stump because that thing will still come back. That's right. Your lawnmower will run over it. You'll trip your toe on it because you've got to cut it to the root. Yeah, you do. But he says... You are reminded that a tree always has hope. And I thought it was odd that here Job is saying there's a comparison of hope and the tree. Somebody say a tree and hope. There's a comparison of a tree and hope. And in Psalms chapter 1 verse 3, David begins to declare he will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water. Which yielded his fruit in its seeds and his leaves does not wither. Yeah. And whatever he does, it shall prosper. Yeah. Jeremiah went on to echo in a couple of books over. He says in Jeremiah 17 verse 8, They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. Yeah. And it does not fear when heat comes. And its leaves are always green and it has no worries. So here in the Word of God, he compares the believer to a tree. Yeah. He says, if you're a believer and you have hope in me, he says, no matter what comes against you, no matter what storms may come, no matter what heat may come, no matter what may tear the branches away, he says, you shall be planted like a tree by the rivers of water, and there will always be hope to grow again. Job said you can cut it down to where the stump looks gnarly and ugly, but when it smells the scent of water, it will begin to grow like a young tree all over again. So here, he compares us as a believer to a tree. He says there is a tree within you, that if you're a believer of God and you gave your life to God, he said I'll make you the exact same way that you'll stand on a firm foundation. You will not be shaken. And we talked about this last week that listen, our hope is not just in things or in progress, but our hope is anchored in Him. That He says, when you're in me, I'll make you anchored like a tree. Okay? He says, when you're in me, I'll make you anchored like a tree. He says, no matter what comes, you will still have hope. No matter what the doctor's report declares, you will still have hope. Even when death is declared, hope says there's still life. Even when bankruptcy comes, hope says there's still life. And he says, because you are anchored in me. And I think it's awfully odd there and ironic that he begins to talk about uh, that there is a hope anchored in the tree, in the tree, in the tree. And then there in Hebrews chapter 7, he says in the law, he says there was a hope. Uh, but Jesus brought about a better hope. Uh, because how you know sometimes we can put our hope in the working of ourselves. Yeah, that I will get out of this situation. Yeah, I will work my way out of it. I will build my relationship again. I will help my kids in a certain way. And so we work and we work and I, we work. But can I tell you something? In the law of the in the law, you will always work but never produce anything. Yeah. But he said there, I come to give you a better hope. Somebody say a better hope. I come to give you a better hope. And I want to let you know that it's not the hope that is in you, but it is the hope that is living in glory. Because I'm reminded that Jesus said, it is the tree that I'm going to hook myself to on Calvary. Yeah. I'm going to allow myself to go and die on a tree. And it's funny because the word of God declares, he said, bless, he said, curse are those 
tree that got man in trouble. There was a tree. It was the tree of good and evil. That when Adam and Eve was standing at it, they made the wrong choice. My good God, I feel like running around this church. It was a tree of life, good, and I'm trying to be cute because it's, it's Easter. I'm trying to be good and stand behind this pulpit. But pray for me because I'm telling you, I feel the anointing flowing over me this morning. He said there was a tree that messed man up. There was a tree. There was a tree that messed man up. And they were in the garden. It was one tree that brought sin into this world because of the wrong decisions. So Jesus said, I've got to go back to a tree, my good God. Because in that garden, there was the tree of good and evil, but there was also the tree of life. And I believe that it was that tree of life, my good God, that Jesus cow, he carried it through the streets of Delarosa. He carried a tree because he said there,
me stand this morning. If you will, would we stand this morning as the praise team begins to sing this song. Jesus. I want to let you know that what the enemy has whispered in your ear is a lie. I didn't get to stand here with a cardboard and tell you my testimony. But my testimony is a kid that had been raped and abused and left for dead to the point I gave up on myself. I have scars on my body from suicide. But God said there's still hope. I want to let you know that the enemy, what he's whispering in your ear is a lie. My good God. What the enemy is whispering in your ear is a lie. <laughs> he declared 2,000 years ago that hope was dead. But Jesus went to hell and said, Satan, you're a liar. <laughs> God wants 
to give it back to you. He wants to give you abundant life this morning. And if that's you, I want you to make a decision to get out of your seat. And I want you to come to this altar. Come on. Come on. If that's you, I want you to come now. Come on. Come on, make the decision to live for Jesus. I'm telling you, it's easier than what your mind is telling you it is. God will give you everything that you need this morning.
And God, I declare right now in the name of Jesus that hope finds its way to this hopeless situation. God, I declare hope. I declare it in the name of Jesus. God, that these things be turned around. God, we won't do it in ourselves. But God, the hope is in the tree. God, the, the hope is in the tree of Calvary. God, we put our hope in the cross. We put our hope in you. Saying there's a better hope. One that is not seen. One that we cannot even feel. But God, we put our hope in that is unseen. Father, we declare this thing. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let the seed be tangible. And let it be touched and felt. Father, I thank you. And I praise you, God. In Jesus' name.